This is a live shot of Gaza this morning. Israeli forces are positioned along the border for an anticipated ground offensive. At least 160 Canadians are among those trying to flee as Israel responds to those attacks by Hamas just a week ago now. Ottawa says it's working to try and find ways to help Canadians stuck in Gaza and Israel for that matter. People are trying to leave there as well. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has said though when it comes to Gaza, a humanitarian corridor is essential. Yesterday, I spoke to Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie from Jordan. Minister Jolie, thank you for making the time. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. What can you tell me about uh, the airlift happening for Canadians who want out of the region um, mm -hmm. in terms of how it's going and, and how much more will be needed? Yes. Well, at this point, there's 6,800 uh, Canadians that have registered with Global Affairs Canada in Israel and flights will continue uh, as a force situation allows it. Uh, so uh, things are going quite smoothly and from the moment uh, Canadians are in Athens, then uh, they can uh, leave and go on Air Canada flights either to Toronto or Montreal. Um, and I've met many of them uh, in Tel Aviv uh, Friday when I was there. And uh, I, 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 must, I must say there were lots of, lots of smiles on their faces. Yeah, I bet. Um, l let's talk about the people stuck in, in Gaza. Obviously, a much smaller number of Canadians in, in that position. Um, but there did seem to be an opportunity on, on Saturday, on the day we're speaking, for a crossing at Rafah. Uh, that seems to have now fallen apart. Um, and, and it seemed as though Americans were going to be allowed to use that crossing. So I guess the first question is, w w if that opens up again, should Canadians make their way to that crossing? And do you think that there will be an agreement that that crossing should be opened up? So we know that as of Saturday morning, Canadian families went to the Rafa crossing and had uh, to uh, turn uh, and, and go back uh, to where they were coming from in Gaza. Uh, and I can understand the, dis the disappointment and the fear and the anxiety. Uh, meanwhile, I had uh, an important meeting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel on Friday where uh, he confirmed me that Canadians in Gaza would have access to safe passage to come back to Canada. So. We have the commitment of Israeli authorities on this issue. Uh, and as for uh, the situation in Gaza itself, of course, we're calling for a humanitarian corridor. Uh, there absolutely needs to be food, water, and fuel uh, going into uh, Gaza because this is one of the worst places to be in the world right now. And so that's why we're actively working on this. I had uh, the chance of having an important meeting with the head of the UN in charge of the humanitarian response for Gaza here in Amman. And we uh, uh, talked in detail of how we could work on this together. I, I, I understand that, that uh, Israel has made this commitment that Canadians will be able to get out, but, but Israelis are also telling people to move towards the south of Gaza. And so that means that they have to rely on the Egyptians opening up that passage. So have you had assurances from Egypt, I guess, that that, that point will be open up for Canadians to leave? Have you reached out to the Egyptians? So we are in contact with many uh, uh, different countries. I've uh, talked to the Egyptians, talked to um, talked to uh, many important players in the region, from Jordan uh, to KSA uh, to uh, the UAE, etc. So uh, I've been on the phone uh, since uh, this uh, war started and yeah. the terrorist attacks by Hamas uh, were launched uh, a week ago. And yes, we are in contact with uh, many of the diplomatic players in uh, this conversation and this 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 work on a humanitarian corridor. Because I, I spoke to a, a gentleman this morning who is uh, who, who was exactly that example. Got to the border, was turned was turned back, and feels trapped in in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And I can understand that feeling. And so that's why I'm uh, very much aware of the dire situation in which. Uh, all Canadians are in Gaza right now, and aid workers as well. Yeah. So 
definitely that is why I am in the region and having conversations to make sure that they come home. Can we talk about sort of the broader conflict? Obviously, we are expecting Israel yes. to um, escalate uh, potentially into a ground incursion over the next hours or days. Um, what, what is what, what kind of conversations are you having with different countries, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, where you are, about how to uh, make sure that this, A, this doesn't escalate beyond that region, uh, that other people aren't drawn in? Um, what kind of conversations are you having on that front? So, a couple of things. First, I was in Israel to understand the human impact of the terrorist attacks, uh, to understand where Israeli people themselves were. Just to give you an example, um, uh, Eli Cohen, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, Israel, told me, showed me very graphic video of what uh, Israeli people uh, suffered in the hands of Hamas video that Rosie, I'll remember all my life. Uh, I met with the families of uh, uh, missing Canadians as well uh, in Tel Aviv. And because there were rockets being launched in Tel Aviv, my team and I had to shelter uh, in a bomb shelter. Uh, so just understanding what the reality in Israel sure. and, and, sure. and daily reality. Um, meanwhile, uh, yes, I was on the phone with the, my counterpart from the Palestinian Authority, uh, had conversations with him. I, we were able also to secure a deal to make sure that Canadians in the West Bank will be able to leave uh, safely. Um, and so we have the um, um, support of Israel, uh, the Palestinian Authority, and Jordan. Buses with Canadians uh, on them will be leaving beginning of the week next week and will be going to Oman. So this is and I've been in contact with our team in Ramallah in the West Bank to make sure that everything is being organized. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is definitely, we have a hundred people around, uh, nearly a hundred people in the West Bank. So that uh, is certainly something, Rosie, that we've been working on. And also I've been in, in contact with my Jordanian counterpart, which I met uh, and had many conversations. Jordan and, and Canada are very close because Jordan is a, always a, a mediator uh, in the Middle East, and so we uh, work a lot with them. Uh, mm -hmm. Spoke with uh, my Qatari counterpart, my um, my um, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, counterpart, Egyptian, etc. So many of them. I, I won't go into all the details of my conversation, but yeah. one thing I would like to draw your attention on is we are concerned also with the situation going on in Lebanon right now. And so the situation is very volatile, particularly in parts of the country, in the southern part of Lebanon. That's why we, we upgraded um, and, and modified our uh, travel advisory to make sure that in certain parts of Lebanon, please avoid all travel. Let me just end on sort of your message to Canadians um, watching this here unfold, you know, Jewish Canadians or uh, Palestinian Canadians who are watching events unfold and who are, are very fearful. Yes, well, of course, we, we, we are with the Israeli people that are grieving right now, and this is a terrible situation. This is an, a, a, a tragedy. Uh, at the same time, Israeli civilians and Palestinian civilians must be protected. Uh, and that's uh, the main message I want to uh, make sure that Canadians uh, understand, because we want to make sure that uh, at all times, in all conflicts, Canada stands with the importance of international humanitarian law. We are always there to uh, abide by international law, mm -hmm. and Israeli civilians and Palestinian civilians are important and equal. And this is how we will uh, continue to act in face of this very important crisis in the Middle East. Minister, thank you for making the time there. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rosie.